And finally, in the coming videos we will start working with MIDI and virtual instruments. Before we begin though, in this video I will briefly go over what MIDI is and how it functions. If you already know what it is or you don't want to learn the technicalities, because let's be honest, you can still use it without having to know exactly how it functions, you can go ahead and skip this video. If you will be using multiple external devices, such as synths, and you don't know how that concept works, then do watch the video, as I will cover that as well. Also, MIDI version 2.0 has been released as of the making of this video, but I will mostly focus on MIDI version 1, because even though uh, MIDI 2 came out in 2020, things have been quiet for various reasons. I personally believe that the main reason is the lack of compatible products. The one product that I know that supports MIDI 2 is the Roland A88 Mark II. Every other product that comes to mind, and that's hundreds of them, are MIDI 1. Now don't worry about getting a device that has MIDI 2. It will be compatible with MIDI 1. So you won't have a problem uh, connecting your devices. Now I'll go over MIDI 1 because the vast majority of you will still be using that for quite a bit. And when 2 becomes a thing, we'll make another video for that. So let's get started. And let's take it from the very beginning. What is MIDI? MIDI is an acronym for Musical Instrument Digital Interface and it is a communications protocol, meaning it allows us to connect different devices such as computers, synths uh, or samplers with MIDI interfaces such as keyboards, controllers, pads, etc. For example, when I connect my MIDI keyboard to my computer, they communicate using MIDI. Before that, and that is before 1981, there was no universal way to connect your devices and you had to use things such as CV, controlled voltage. If you are into synthesizers, then you are probably using that even now. So MIDI is the universal language that allows your devices to communicate. So no matter the brand and the model, they will communicate with each other. And here's the thing that might be confusing when you start out. A MIDI device does not send out an audio signal. So when you get a MIDI keyboard, for example, it will not have something on it or in it that will produce a sound. It literally only transmits information, data. So how does this data transmission happen? Let's get a bit more technical. So we have MIDI messages and MIDI events. MIDI messages are the data that will tell your gear what to do. So, for example, let's say you play the note D4 in your MIDI keyboard and you play it in a certain velocity, so let's say MIDI volume, not too loud, not too quiet, then that MIDI information, that MIDI message, will go to your computer and based on what you did, the system will respond accordingly and will translate that to the note you played in the velocity you played it. Uh, and the sound that will be produced will be <laughs> whatever you choose. And that's the beauty of MIDI and virtual instruments. You can load a violin, a choir, a drum kit, a piano, anything. We will look at all of that in a bit. We have two types of MIDI messages, system and channel. Channel messages are responsible for things such as note on and off. So I play a note and then when I release the key, my MIDI controller sends a note off message to the system to stop playing the note. So you can think of it as a musician releasing a note, so it stops playing. Another good one, especially if you use synths, is the aftertouch. According to the pressure you apply on the keys, a different message will be sent to the system. Or another one is pitch bend. Now I won't go over everything here because I will make a detailed video about it, but as you can tell, channel messages are important when it comes to creating expressiveness. And in the digital world, Every little thing helps to make it sound more human and realistic. Now, system messages on the other hand have nothing to do with performance, but have some very important functions. The one you will most likely use is the MIDI clock. Let's say that you have three synthesizers and you want to connect them and synchronize them. So why would you want to synchronize your synths? You may have a drum beat on one synth 
a base sequence on another and another sequence on the third one. So in order to synchronize them and have them play in time with each other, you connect them via MIDI and use the MIDI clock and all your devices are perfectly synchronized. Of course there are more, but as I said, on another video. Now MIDI channels. You won't be doing much with MIDI channels if you are mostly working on your DAW. If you are working with synths or external devices though, then you will be using MIDI channels much more often. Essentially, MIDI channels allow you to specify which of the messages go to which device. So, in MIDI 1, we are working with 16 channels. Anything from 1 to 16. Here's an example so that you understand it better. So let's say that you have a sequencer, and you want to connect it to three synthesizers. In this case, the sequencer will be the transmitter of MIDI messages, and the synths will be the receivers of MIDI messages. And the way you connect them is via MIDI cable, usually by a daisy chain. Now if you look at the back of your device, they usually have MIDI out and MIDI in ports. Now MIDI out sends, transmits data, and MIDI in receives data. So in this example, you connect the sequencer via MIDI out to the MIDI in of the first synth, then to the MIDI out of the first synth, to the MIDI in of the second synth, and so on. So quick note here, if the synths don't have a MIDI out port, then you will have to use a MIDI through device. That essentially splits the signal. And now here's where MIDI channels come in. You set each synth to a different channel. So synth 1, channel 1, synth 2, channel 2, and so on. Then you go to your sequencer and assign MIDI channels on that. So when you set your MIDI channel 1 in your sequencer, anything you do on it will only be played back by the synth that has also been set to channel 1. Then, when you change the MIDI channel to 2 on your sequencer, anything you do will only be played back by the synth that is set to receive MIDI, uh, MIDI data from channel 2. So to break it down even more, you start the sequence on channel 1 and it is played back from synth 1. Then start a sequence on channel 2 and it is played back from synth 2. That way, you can have multiple instruments playing together in sync without interfering with each other. Now that is a very very brief introduction for concepts that require their separate video and demonstration. But for the vast majority of the DAW producers, composers and musicians, you won't be needing them as everything is automatically assigned into your DAW and you can simply start using MIDI straight away. And we will have a look at that in the next video.